apologize. He's always assisted us with this over the years. Uh, and I'm sorry if you didn't know it, and I know you all at tonight's session, you know this is Battalion Chief John Austin, one of our, our good, good friends from a long time back. Uh, uh, how many years we go back? Who knows? Before they make the TV. Evaluate them at the end or test them at the end to 
see if they've done it properly. If you can do that, then your training is going to be effective and your training is going to be consistent. My name is John Alston. I've been with the Jersey City Fire Department for 27 years. Uh, recently promoted battalion chief, and the story they did not tell you is that my first captain's exam, I came out 171 in 1992. Yeah, I cried. <laughs> I cried. I came out 171. I didn't know what I had done wrong. And these were my friends for years. They've been doing this for years. That's why they're so good at it. They were consistent and specific. They set benchmarks. And I called them immediately. What the hell did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? When I explained to them my responses were on my oral assessment, they clearly knew exactly what was wrong. First of all, I chose the wrong words. Chose the wrong words. I wasn't clear. I knew what I wanted to say, but I wasn't clear. My situation were two firefighters fighting. And I had to deal with it. It's dumb. Brooks and Stone, you remember? That's 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it was close to the notes you had. <laughs> Brooks and Stone were fighting. And I had to deal with it. I knew exactly what my course of action would be, but I started out by saying, it's unfortunate that we have to deal with this situation at the firehouse. Oh, that I have to deal with the situation at the firehouse. And then I went through my plan. My plan was right. But I already told the instructors and the assessors that I didn't think that was my job. I didn't think that was my job. It was my job. When they set it up the next time, I wasn't going to fail. Be specific. One of my duties recently was to be the training chief of the Jersey Fire Department and I ran 63 recruits through Brody School. One of the regular assignments I have is training first line supervisors. I run a two week captain school. And one of the things I remind them as officers is that you are a trainer. You're an instructor. The model that I use is based on the National Fire Academy and an old military model. Prepare, present, apply, and test. Prepare, present, apply, and test. What these lovely gentlemen, whom it is my esteemed pleasure and honor to know, added another component to it, the follow-up. To ensure that learning has taken place, the follow-up. It's one thing if you test a person after you've shown them, but have they retained it? The only way to know if they retain it is to follow up. You prepare the student. You tell them the importance. We welcome them first. We tell them the importance of their presence in your organization. The in-service training that you're going to give them, bless you, how it fits. It's on page 28. Oh, okay. Right, it's on page 28. How it fits. What the actual piece of equipment or the procedure is and how important it is to the service and how important it is that they learn this before they learn anything else. It's a building block or a modular approach. All right? In our training scenario, I had to train someone how to tie a bowline or a bowling knot, however you call it. So I know some people say roof and rugs. All right? Depending on where you are on the Mississippi or east and west of the Mississippi. The nomenclatures. Knowing how to use the proper terms. All right. So you prepare the student, you tell them how important it is. Then you present the student, whatever that piece of equipment is, whatever that procedure is, you present it to them. And yes, you show them how to do it using the proper terms. No jargon, the proper terms. Use the manufacturer's terms. Because when they go back and look in their books, they're able to find what you're talking about. They have a basis or a framework. Of what, and a frame of reference for what you're talking about. After you present it to them, you show them how to do it, <coughs> then you let them do it. It's the application process. And you do it with them. You do it slowly first, then at normal speed, slowly again. Letting them see the pieces come together. Then it's test time. Can they do it on their own without any instruction? Can they do it properly? Now, they may make mistakes. That's okay. And you go back to the application. Because 
in an assessment center, I can assure you the actor is going to do it wrong. They're going to do it wrong to see what your response is going to be. Are you going to give positive criticism or positive corrections? Are you going to give negative corrections? Are you going to know how to do it? Or will you miss it completely? You're being graded on how you address that issue. If they miss it, you back up a step. You go back to the application. If they don't understand the application, you back up to the presentation part. If they miss the presentation part, you back up to preparing them. And you let them know that you're not going to move any further until they move forward. It's up to them. You get to the testing period and see if they can perform it on their own proficiently. Once that's done, you set a time to follow up. Two weeks, two tours, two months, whatever. Be specific. When you're going to check and see if they retained it, you're going to congratulate them and you're going to move forward. Make sense? Yes. Any yes. questions? Yes, One once. One twice. All right. Firefighter Stone. <laughs> Newly appointed uh, firefighter, fresh out of the academy. Yes, sir. Pleased to meet you this morning. My name is Chief Austin. Um, you're going to be working, I'm sorry, Captain Austin. I'll be working with you here. Um, I've heard a lot about you in the academy. Yes, sir. And uh, I've reviewed your files. These are things that we've covered. They're in your basic manual. However, from time to time, we're going to have in-service training where we're going to go over pieces of equipment, specific pieces of equipment that relate to this piece of apparatus. And as we begin this process, we're going to move from one in, uh, instrument or tool to the next. So what I'd like to do this morning, I'd like to talk to you about the bowline. Mm -hmm. Bowline knot. It is one of the most secure knots in the fire service. It's one of the knots that we choose because of its ease of use, its ease of application. You can even tie it in full personal protective equipment. I know that you're familiar with it because I reviewed your uh, skills checkoff sheets. But what I wanted to do is just make sure you still understood that the rope had parts to it. That there's a running part, there's a standing part, there is a bite, there's a loop, there's an intersection. So, with the bowline knot, and if you will, let's stand this way, so we'll side by side. I see you're a lefty or a right. Which one is it? Either way. Okay. Well, you want to just make a loop in your hand. Hold your hand open. You take the running part, there's your intersection, you take your running part, go through the loop, go around that standing part, go back through the loop, and pull. That's, <laughs> that's the first time, but that's okay. One of the reasons we, why we use this knot is that it's pretty easy to tie. And uh, if you're having troubles with it, it's probably because you haven't done it before. But again, we're going to continue to do this until you get it right. So again, what we want to do is hold it in our hands. Follow me. Put this hand down. Let's try that. All right, and I'll match you with the other side. Open your hand. And you, know, you want to see pieces come together. Make a loop. Good. Hold it securely with your thumb. Great. You want to take the running hand, take it through the loop, Slowly, you want to watch the process. Go down and around, standing part. Go back inside of the loop. <laughs> Hold it against the other part, this setup right here. And you want to take the standing part and you want to pull it securely until you make the knot. Now, again, your knot doesn't look like my knot. And it could be the rope. So what we're going to do is make a bigger loop. How's that? So we'll make an even bigger loop. So, make a loop in our hand. Take the time. Okay. Does yours look like mine? Yes. Now we've got enough room to work with. Go underneath, down and around. Not too far. Back inside. Hold those two pieces together. Great. And I want you to take the standing part and just pull it slowly 
So you watch the knot form. Just hold those two people. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the problem is? I think I know. But what do you think the problem is? Okay. <laughs>